that's my that's my first ukulele that I started. So that's on. very similar to my first ukulele. I, I started slightly <laughs> higher brow than you. I had, oh, I had a, um, did you have a car the dolphin? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Was Classic. Back in the day, in the nineties, I got to play with um, Ivan Dando once. I don't know if I ever told you that. No. Yeah. <laughs> So this is where you teach, isn't it? Yeah, this, this is where the magic happens. So yeah. I do my physical lessons in here, and then most of my lessons are on Skype on the on the computer now. So um, I used I used to do it all literally until about two years ago. I used to do all my Skype lessons on my iPhone. Really, wow! And I got I kind of got tired of looking at a screen. Like yeah, <laughs> like, like this. wow. So um, I got myself a, a proper setup, and yeah, this is where I do the majority of my lessons now. And what do you do? So half hour format is normally on uh, an, an hour. hour. You do an hour. Yeah, I do. I do an oh, hour. Wow. So it gives us a chance to really kind of dig into a bit of repertoire. So yeah, we do a lot of repertoire. We've done some of your stuff, Paul. That too. Oh, I <laughs> so. love you, man. Let's talk about that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I love your stuff. I probably got it here somewhere. Oh, but, I, love uh, it. I only do half hours. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's interesting that you do an hour because yeah. I find people find it hard to concentrate for an hour. I need to yeah. concentrate for now, Matt. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, people or is this you? <laughs> what, you what are we talking you about? You use concentration after 10 minutes. It's not. <laughs> Well, what I do is have an episode of Coronation Street. Yeah. 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 So if they go on a bit, I just, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I find, I don't know, I kind of... Um, You're just a I, more engaging teacher. I, no, 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 it's not like, like this, I just go on a bit. I, kind of, I find that a lot of my students, because I've been teaching them years as well, mm. Like some of it is a social thing. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. talking to Jeff about this when he came over. Like about with some of his students, they mm. just love to hang out as well. Yeah. Mm. So sometimes you know we might spend ten minutes, quarter of an hour catching up. Yeah. I worry if I did a half an hour lesson, it'd be like yeah, you've only got <laughs> half an hour. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> Five. Yeah, exactly. So most of your lessons are you generally working on one piece, and you then say go away and work on it and then we'll deconstruct it next week, is that what you're doing? Yeah, but I always say to my students, and I think it's really important, that the repertoire is just like a means to an end. Mm. So I find, and you probably find this with your, your students as well, sometimes like students want to perfect every piece of music and they might think, oh, I don't want to move on to something new yet because I want to, you know, really perfect that one piece of repertoire. I'd always say have two or three like that on the back burner that you do, you know, perfect. But most of, most of the times, so I say it's like a means to an end. So I'm trying to teach them a particular skill, you know, if it's mm. like harmonics, if I'm trying to teach them about dominant chords, yeah. something like that. And sometimes it's perfecting, it might not be perfecting a piece of repertoire all the way through, it's perfecting the sound, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Because I do get that where someone will um, play a piece of music, you know. And it's something that I'm talking about. Like, I often, I'm quite into kind of that kind of legato way of playing. You know? where every note kind of flows into another. And some of my students will say, look, I've nailed that piece, it goes. And I'm like, yeah, but no, we won't. I mean, that's you know, so it's little details, isn't it? Well, I, I, last week, I think every lesson I did was on getting people to play legato, and we had a massive conversation about this yesterday. And to be honest, I stole that from you. I remember you talking about it. <laughs> um, and, so I get students, what I often get them to do is just do chromatic scales, but I yeah. say to them, this is a listening exercise. You've got to listen so that you're getting that legato sound. And yeah, like you, I think that's what lifts the player yeah. to not play staccato or whatever. I noticed quite a few ukulele players on YouTube, the reason they get that staccato sound is that people concentrate so much on this left hand, but a lot of the time they'll play a note and they'll, they'll, they'll put that, yeah, they're rapping. I'm sure you and me have the same conversations week in, week out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 my exactly. last week, I, I describe it, if, if you're hitting a golf ball, you don't stop before you hit it. Yeah. You swing through That's and you it. hit it. And it's the same with your fingers on the uke. I always use my old tennis analogy. I used to have a coach who used to say, hit through the ball. Yeah. And I still remember, like, yeah. you know, hit through, follow through, and, you know. That's, there's a really lovely um, interview that I read um, years ago, Jake Shimabukuro, mm. and he was talking about how the tail of the note is the most beautiful part of the note, as right. it decays away. And it yeah. is what you think about, isn't it? But sometimes, yeah, they're kind of in a rush to hit the next note, but it's like, just listen to, the, listen to that decay, and that's where the beauty is. Have you 
gaps. If anybody wants to learn with you at the moment, and Matt is the best teacher out there. <laughs> uh, this guy's pretty good actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in fact, got... I think I've sent a couple of students to you. You are. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Are. yeah. yeah. they were all. <laughs> Back. If you watch any of our videos, you'll realise we don't pay Paul Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I am um, uh, sadly I'm fully booked at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to. I'm just so busy. I mean, we're, sure. we've, we've talked about it with other stuff, but because I'm running yeah. a festival and I've got the shop and that. Yeah. Um, my biggest challenge in life is trying to do less, actually. Yeah. So. Um, and we're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. No, because it's a nice distraction sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, so, in fact, Fridays, actually, just generally out of interest of my day, that I generally just do festival stuff. So oh, I've wow. booked off my entire Friday yeah. um, where I just. I can emails and yeah. you know website stuff but I do my kind of some of my YouTube stuff as well um, but yeah I, I try not to do more than four lessons a day um, right but, but then I'll have other stuff so like yeah Monday I'll teach four lessons but then I'll do Canna until you know half yeah. eight at night so I feel I feel your pain but in a good yeah. way it's yeah, yeah, yeah it's exciting but yeah I I um uh, I've got a waiting list, so if anyone's genuinely interested, give, okay, give, go on. give us a shout. It's just not enough hours in the day, is there? No. I keep saying if I could just clone myself. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd want four clones. I'd have a Matt working in the shop, I'd have yeah. a Matt doing physical lessons, a Matt doing festival stuff, and then a Matt doing all the YouTube stuff. And yeah, yeah, be fine. you'd be fine. And then if I could have an accountant, Matt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so we are in with Matt's vintage collection. Hola. <laughs> so yeah, um, got, got all sorts of stuff here really. So I got a bit obsessed about the history of the uke. So um, I love kind of all the little kind of kitsch models and stuff. So one of the first ones I got was this one, which is a polka lele. And um, these these are really great, right? Look complete mad, don't they? Yeah. The surfers, they used to go on the beach they play some music, stab that into the sand, <laughs> go surfing, <laughs> bring their surfboards back. And that was like a flag in the sand so they knew where to come back to where the clothes were and everything. They pick it back up and then play a few songs for the surfer girls. <laughs> so wow. I just yes. love I just love all these kind of things. That is possibly really the quirky. most amazing duke I've ever isn't seen. Isn't it mad? Isn't yeah. it mad? Nowadays, um, they still play, but nowadays you mostly get people just put them on top of their fireplace in California yeah. and stuff. But then you've got things like the old Regal Ukes, um, which are beautiful. I think they're made in Chicago. And they knocked out, you know, kind of thousands and thousands of these things. Some of them are just plywood, but I love all the kind of little Art Deco stencils. Mm. Just like little subtle one around the sound hole. That's an original um, Gretsch Camp Uke, which was uh, designed to be produced really cheaply because they didn't have to bend the sides. Mm. And then you could just kind of play around the campfire and stuff. Then we've got things like the first plastic ukuleles designed by McAfee, um, the Islanders, which are really, really great fun. That was got a, co a chordomatic. Yeah. You press the buttons and strum, <laughs> and it plays the chords for you. I like <laughs> the pitch pipes at the top as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never be out of tune. <laughs> I think they still work. Hang on, let me. Yeah, <laughs> it's not in tune. They listen. No. no. <laughs> um, and then the the Yeeks that I'm really passionate about, which I love more than any other, are Martin. Um, I think CF Martin Co. They just make the the some of the best ukuleles of all time. Not the best, you know. There are some other great factories like the Hawaiian brands like Kamaka, but they just build them so lightly and so beautifully. So we've built up a collection of these. So you've got the old style ones. That's actually a modern Martin, a style three. So um, what year were these from, these ones? Oh, we've got a variety, 50s. I've got a couple in the other room that are from the 20s. Wow. Some really early ones, which are beautiful. This is a 1920s, but it's been refinished, which is a style one. You can see it's still got the original peg tuners. And it, Martin's great. Um, there's a brilliant book that was written by John King before he passed away. Um, with, I forget the other James guy's name. Yes, yeah. And um, they, they kind of 
they catalogued all the old Martin production things and, and they made um, observations down to like the, the shape of the frets and the pegs that were used. So you can actually use their book to date most Martins wow. within about five years, which is quite amazing really. And the, di the different time periods, they had different kind of um, neck kind of profiles and things like that. So kind of fascinating. I love the old Gibson. Mm. So it's interesting. It's called the Gibson. Yeah, is it? They had, they had. To, there's a real trend for that. You had the Law as well, which is like oh. an old mandolin maker that used to do it. Um, but that's what um, George Harrison used to play, wasn't it? He used to play Gibson, and I think he gave his Gibson tenor to Paul McCartney, yeah. who still plays it on on stage now. Oh, wow. So I love, I love the Gibsons. Yeah. It's got a kind of a. All, all the old Gibsons, I think this is from the 20s, it could be 30s, so don't, so don't quote me on that, but they, they ha all have this lovely dark stain. Mm. It's like a, a kind of different feel, isn't it, to the old, yeah. to, the, to the Martins, which I love. Um, still all made of solid mahogany, still beautifully, beautifully made. And I love the fact that, you know, oh, terribly out of tune, but, you know, 100 years on, you can still make beautiful yeah. music yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, like, is that the original amazing. case? Uh, I'm not sure that it's possible because it has still got the yeah so probable I it would, looks too yeah. nice to be but it, oh, it right. probably is yeah it's got the original <laughs> it, it's got it's still got the registration not filled well, out so if, it, if it breaks you'll be so, fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> to register your warranty <laughs> try and register it <laughs> where did you buy it in the new cream a hundred years yeah. ago it's, it's mad really but I love it I love it when you still get all the case yeah that's thing. what you want sometimes you get little notes that people have written about the ukuleles and stuff that one's still in the box. I've still not opened it. That's an original yeah. TV pal, Arthur Godfrey. And then here are my Kamakas. I absolutely love um, Kamaka ukulele as well. Sorry, another Gibson then, my Kamakas. This one's one of my absolute favourites. This is really interesting because um, if you look inside, I don't know if you can get that on camera, it says special concert. But so th that's that's a soprano size, yeah. isn't it? But back yeah. then, that was considered their concert version. Wow. And sometimes they use concert to designate the styles rather than the size as well. So, but it does say concert size. So mm. their sopranos would have been even smaller than that. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't it? Oh, and that it's a, nice. so mellow. This oh, one. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, that just that sounds so forty. It does doesn't it? It sounds Hawaiian as well. Doesn't yeah. It? Really nice sound that one, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, lovely. Right. Yeah, that's so wide. Yeah, it, it kind of needs that, doesn't yeah. it? Plus the um, it really sinks that one, doesn't it? Absolutely. And do you leave the original strings on these, or are you restring them all? It I depends. You've got to restring them, haven't you? Yeah, it depends. So sometimes I'll put the leave the originals on if they're like the old original gut strings. Um, we've got a couple of ukes that have still got the gut strings on. But generally, they're you know, especially after a hundred years, yeah. they're, they're <laughs> so worn and they're just yeah. they'll just sound they just sound awful. So that's actually got worth browns on it. Yeah. I thought it brought out the, the tone. yeah, it but really I mean, well. the tone in this one is amazing, Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't and, and still, like I've not tuned that probably for a month. <laughs> And it's still almost yeah. in, in perfect shape. Sweet looking it's amazing. Thing. So yeah, it's an old Kamaka that one. I think that was 1920s. Really? And Kamaka are the um, oldest ukulele manufacturers still in continuous production. Right. So Martin had a break in production. Yeah. I think it was in the 30s. Yeah. Whereas Kamaka went right the way through. So technically Kamaka are the oldest still going wow. ukulele manufacturer in the, in the world. I love these early ones that Samuel Kamaka mm. used to make himself. The sound holes really high. Yeah, that's really kind weird. It looks like it? an alien or something, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's well, got... a minion. <laughs> yeah, but look, look how thin that neck is. Yeah, that just amazing. Yeah, there. Yeah. And everything's made out of wood. The nuts made out of wood, and the um, the bridge, the saddle is just included as well. Oh, and wow. then even the tuners. So the only thing that's not wood are the yeah metal frets and the strings, which is quite quite. And presumably. Amazing. Soprano was the main one, so presumably it's harder to get like a console. Yeah, kind of concerts became um, a 
popular a little bit later on so you do get concert versions but yeah if you go back to like 20s and 30s yeah they mostly all find sopranos, sopranos um, there's another Kamaka soprano which shows you how small they were yeah that that kind of reminds me of one of the early kind of um, one of the earliest ukuleles like, yeah you know like Nunes and yeah it um, does make Santos used to make it's got that yeah you've got that um, fingerboard that just joins the body with no kind of raised fingerboard yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and they're kind of small they call it the peanut shape don't yeah they? just lovely that's a little co yeah one. it's got an arch but back yeah yeah, yeah. it's it, got yeah. A, it's got a radius yeah going that way which is um yeah that's a really kind of detailed thing to do yeah it's meant to kind of project the shout sound out isn't mm. it you get it on guitars and things yeah um beauty. phil davidson we've got some of his his shoots in he he um, works in Forest Dean where, right. where I live and I absolutely love his work yeah and he always um, arches his back oh as okay well. so you find um, whoops that's so it's like a, a slight arch that way yeah but notice how narrow it gets towards yeah. the top as well yeah and um, Phil really believes that that helps the kind of the tone production really pushes oh, wow. out the sound so that's a beauty that yeah, one beautiful. isn't it yeah it's lovely yeah, yeah. Yeah. I nearly, I nearly took this home myself wow. because it matches my Doc Martens. Cherry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I like so I nice. Like the... That's quite a nice one as well that we've got in this probably. There's a real kind of mellowness. Yeah, very. In Phil's Ukes, which is really, really mm. beautiful. And they smell nice. Well. Yeah, I'm not the only one that sniffs you. Oh no, I have every, to do it. I'm a sound to do sniffer for this time. Yeah, where, and then Pete was offering you just planks of wood for the sniff. sniff, and I had a right <laughs> good sniff of them. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. This so occasionally we get a disaster that's happened. Look at this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I came in last week oh, and no. the uh, the bridges popped off. Oh wow. I yeah. think that that's a really unusual uke that. Um I think it we think it might be an Irish uke. I've not really got it's it to, to, to there. I could it's like Cameron or Camara or something. But um I think it might be an Irish one. Can't but mean it. you can see that they, they glued the bridge on top of the varnish yeah. which is like that's always a bit of a mistake to uh, make. okay so they probably just they probably just did it too quickly and didn't yeah. take the time so it pops up so well you mean that yourself yeah that's a repair job i've got to do yeah yeah <laughs> so my my work my workshop is a real mess but if you want to have a look you can do i think yeah. people are going to love seeing <laughs> messy workshop yeah, no but like the Ukes, but, uh, so uh, this is this is a vintage Martin that um, was one of my students, and the um, the it had a loose brace, so I've just I glued that back in yesterday, so that's um, that's all repaired now. So that's a vintage Martin I've been working on. And then this one of my students, Bangalore, is that she she wanted to fit a vellum herself, so right. we actually I said rather than me doing it, why don't you do it? And she came in and we did it together. Oh, wow. So I'm just resetting the neck because the neck was should should be like that, but was like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm resetting the neck. But originally I was going to build my own ukes, and this is this is as far as I've got so far. <laughs> <laughs> I've thicknessed one piece yeah. of wood. <laughs> but um, eventually, I have built my own one, but I was meant to start a series of them, but I'm too, mm. just too busy. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> can't do it all. Well, these, these ones aren't expensive ukes at all, like the Harmonies, but they've become really collectible yeah. um, because of their kind of just fun design. So that one's got, I kind of like the fact this one's got the original uke tuning ADF sharp B written. <laughs> so if you didn't know how to tune it, you can, uh, you, you've got your daily reminder. Yeah, uh, which is which is quite nice. And again, you've got the Art Deco thing. Quite often they would use plastic fretboards, yeah. and it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Because even though the frets wear out a little bit, you don't have to worry about intonation. Yeah. Because when you put the frets in yourself, you've got to be so accurate, you know, right. to within a percentage of a millimetre. But a plastic moulded fretboard is yeah, going to be yeah. right every time. Or wrong every time. <laughs> 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 Is that old Barnes and Mullins? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's got plastic fretboard as well. Um, interestingly, so yeah, they made um, they made Dukes going back quite a few years. I didn't know they. I had a, I've had a few Barnes and Mullins guitars. Yeah, yeah. They. I think. I think it's thirties and forties when yeah. when that they surged again. I think pretty much all the guitar manufacturers went into it. Yeah. It's a bit like um, a bit like you got a few years ago over here. So. 
me, I mean, you, you've been playing you a few years, haven't you? Mm. So you, you know what it was like back in the day. Mm. There weren't that many manufacturers. Yeah. And then when it boomed, all mm. the guitar, you know, you get Fender ukuleles now, don't you? And, uh, yeah. Kind of. Um, we don't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only thing I find with guitar builders when they go into ukes, they quite often have the tops way too thick. Yeah. Because that's how they build their guitars. Oh, I suppose. Uh, yeah. So yeah. They. Um, and interestingly, a lot of people said that about Martin. I actually really like the modern Martins, but the it is a it is a lot weightier. There's well, a you, lot you more wood. I, I have a modern Martin, and I love it. Um, there's just there's just something about it that I really yeah. like. However, when you go and look, it's like looking around Pete's just and you look at these, you realise my modern Martin does. It, it looks like a toy mm. in the finish on it and the yeah I mean he's I, he, I still I still really like my Martin but I feel like I'm quite often out on my own on that one I, yeah I, I, th I think I, I really think they're great actually I think yeah. the tone you get out of them is great but Kawaii started doing their own kind of Martin copies mm. and yeah. some people said they got it better than Martin themselves because they're um, they're a lot lighter yeah and the tops are a lot thinner, so they're kind of a bit more vibrant, um, which is kind of interesting. But those are both basically style three mm. Martins, aren't they? Um, modeled on the old ones. But there's something about there is something about having the made in Pennsylvania thing, you know. Yeah. And I think even though they're heavier built, I think actually it's still got a. Got quite a nice meaty yeah. tone to them, which yeah. I really like, especially in the mahogany ones. But um, yeah. So this, people if they want to come and try one to buy, they can book an appointment. Yeah, book an appointment. Yeah. Because um, uh, just, I have to fit it around my teaching. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, book an appointment, get, send me an email and you can come and try them to your, to your yeah. heart's and content. And are they all currently listed on the website with the prices? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it's yeah. up to date. Yeah, um, should yeah. be. Should be. Um, occasionally, so not everything's for sale. Like I've got this old ukulin that um, mm. I just can't. I I've got a tune for thirty-seven strings, and I just haven't got the wherewithal <laughs> to do it at the moment. Yeah. So there's some stuff that in the shop that we haven't got on the website, but generally yeah. it's up it's up there, and people can. Um, well, yeah, what a, can what a fantastic collection! Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, feel privileged yeah. to uh, yeah. to just come in and look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to put the camera down and play a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I made. Ah, so uh, okay. I thought you might like to have a... Yeah. Oh wow, and did you design it? Yeah, so I um, made it with Phil. He kind of, he kind of taught me how to, to, to do everything. But he got me to literally do you know everything by hand myself, basically. Um, so that's the, that's the um, when we went to Hawaii, we got in at sort of one o'clock in the morning sort of thing, but we're yeah. still on British time. So the kids wouldn't sleep. So we took them to the beach and there was this yellow full moon. And I just remember it really vividly. It was like everything was yellow and black. So this is what I kind of tried to replicate. So this is lot. gold mother of pearl. And then originally I just had this, which was like the beach. Yeah. Um, and we we're like, well, oh, it looks so much better if you've got the horizon in. So we used the gold mother of pearl for the sea. So that's meant to look like the first night we got into Hawaii. And then this end, this is um, this is modelled. That's actually copied from an exact real oak leaf. So I took a baby oak leaf and I, and I copied it. And Phil thought I was mad at first because it was really hard to cut yeah, out and shape. Um, and uh, I'd need to put some more lemon oil on that. It's drying out a bit. But yeah, it's uh, it's in the oak leaf. So originally, when I, I and I might get round to build them, them again. But originally, I was going to call them forest ukes, and each one would have a different leaf. So oh, like you know, you might wow, get like what a maple cool and, idea. You know, whatever so um and then that's that's in the, in, on the um on the little label the that's label. an oak leaf as well so yeah that's that's what i made that's well, and do you use that to perform i use it to teach yeah i have performed for it yeah but I, I mostly use it to teach so yeah. it's up on the wall you know it's got like dings and scratches and everything yeah yeah because i just play the heck out of it yeah you know? i think ukes are there to be ukes are there to be played oh, yeah. <laughs> It's quite seamless, doesn't it? Thanks, mate. It's really it's a light soft, top. isn't it? Yeah, so Phil's really passionate about building them really light, so the top's just strong enough that it doesn't implode, basically. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm 
nice. sure you'll, um, if you do get around to building them, you'll sell a lot. Oh, one day, one, one day. day. Here's some, here's some of my new ukulele. Oh, wow. Yeah, Chuck Moore. What have we got here? <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, oh my God. Just, I'm absolutely in love with this ukulele. So, I, sorry, I don't know about Chuck so Moore. So Chuck Moore, he's kind of considered the, kind of the best builder in the world, really. He's, um, wow. I know that's a bit contentious, no, no, but, but he, um, his ukes, he, they just auctioned one for Maui and it went for like $30,000. They're really, really super, super nice. Mine didn't cost me $30,000. Just putting that on record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I've, I've loved Chuck's work for years and I managed to get one second hand from a guy in, um, in London and I just really? fell in love with it. It's got like such a mellow tone to it, really, really gentle and beautiful to play. Yeah. So um, they're quite hard. You can't just buy a Chuck you. Kind of, he puts them up on line, and the first person that says they want it, wants it kind of gets to have it. And they tend to go over in about three or four minutes, literally like really, really quick. quick. But he uh, he let he let me have a kind of sneak preview of this one, and it's built using the same materials as my other one. So and he's in Hawaii, is he? Yeah, it's based on the um, the Big Island. Right. So uh, they nearly had to move out when they had all those eruptions a couple of years ago. Is he making? Um, I think he makes. Uh, I I couldn't tell you exactly, but I see them come up maybe three a month, maybe something like that. So it's not yeah. massive numbers. Um, so, but he really, you know, he's he's quite obsessive about the craftsmanship and stuff. <laughs> he just <laughs> yeah. I mean, even like what I love about that is it's really hard to detect, but it's actually radius on the top, which is really unusual. So right. the top is slightly radius. Oh, yeah. So it puts pressure on it and it means that you don't have to have wow. such a thick top, you can keep it super light. I mean the more you look at it, the more you suddenly start noticing. Yeah. Don't you? Oh, so we know a little bit more about bracing well, now, you see. Well, I was going to say, that's also, I mean, again, I don't want to give any secrets away, but that's what Pete's trying on the next level of the British oh, UK okay. is raised to the top. So it's, cause he's talking about stretching. Yeah. Yeah, it adds strength as well. Chuck uses a carbon fibre bridge patch underneath the bridge as well, uh, rather than wood, which kind oh, of um, gives it a uh, really, really good tone of strength, which is lovely. So these are um, Uke Logic, ah, see, I've not and um, I love them on Koa Ukes. Yeah. Um, it's like any string type, I think you have to experiment with what works for you, don't you? Yeah. But th these have got a very mellow style, so when yeah. I play with long nails, and yeah. the fingers, it acts like thin a warm on the... Yeah, yeah, I think this one's quite thin, but quite a reasonably thick Yeah, that's what I was thinking, I was thinking the G and the A are quite thin, but then the C's, I mean, obviously thicker, but that's that kind of pillowy. And you can play it like, <laughs> yeah, right up there. Is this the one you recorded your album with? Yeah, because I almost yeah. got. I can almost it, like I did use. It. I did. Yeah, I did. This is on most of the tracks. I did use a few ukes. I used my own for a couple. Oh, nice. um, I used my bow Hannah. Um, I've I've got kind of, um, I guess sort of four or five main ukes. So yeah, kind of more betters. And then I've got a ute made by Jake McClay, which I really love, mm. my hive. That's what I use for my early recordings. Um, I've got one made by Aaron Kine Bean Sprout, which is really lovely. Yeah. That's down there, actually. Really, really lovely uke. And then one made by Bo Hannum. And then I've got my Phil Davidson. And so the album's got all of those. I kind of swap them around. But the, yeah. the Chuck Morris on every track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. I really, I really love it. Have you done a cover for the album yet? Uh, yeah, I'm working on it at the moment. Can we, can we uh, see it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, if it's a working project and it's not done, don't really have to right. it. That's beautiful. Do you know what That's it in, right. immediately yeah. makes me think of? Bigger. Yeah, go on. Uh, Tinder Sticks. Oh, I love Tinder Sticks, yeah. That's, doesn't it look like a Tinder Sticks album? Yeah. yeah. That's probably something I was going for subconsciously, because I love Tinder Sticks. Yeah, me too. It's actually a Degas painting. Um, right. So I, I really love yeah. kind of um, Degas ballet. Yeah. Welcome back to Anarchy in the Ukulele. Um, we are here at the Ute Room again with Matt Stead. Hello. <laughs> and um, so 
we've we've had a good tour round, yeah. but we wanted to talk to Matt about a few things because so much. Not a day goes by that Matt doesn't release something. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> so, so you've got a new book out. Yeah. You've got an album coming out. Yeah. Um, and there's, you've got this tiny little project. <laughs> that little festival. That little yeah. festival. Tiny little <laughs> festival. It's the Ukulele Festival of Great Britain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next July, which we're very excited about. And um, yeah, so we thought we'd, we'd just go through a few of those things. Where, where should yeah, we start? Where do you want to start, Paul? I'd like to start with a book. Let's start oh, with a book. Oh, this is exciting. You, you, you love a book, don't you, Paul? I love a book by Matt. Book. One yeah. of my favourite books is Matt's Jazz Book. Oh, thank you. Um, have you something. got that here somewhere? <laughs> there we go. There we go. This is a great book. So I've reviewed this, actually. Um, if you're into jazz and if you're into chord melody, this is where to go. Um, I love Doxy. Oh, yeah. Doxy. 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 It's an amazing tune, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's got some, I mean, it's got Round Midnight and Nature Boy. Have you heard the story about the guy who wrote Nature Boy? Yeah, there's, there's a little bit. No, is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a film about this, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. a about it. Is that? That's a good book. It, it's it's, it's I'm, I'm, called Melody. It's not for yeah. beginners, but if you've been playing a little while, it's a beautiful book. The Honeysuckle Rose. I'm going to really get myself nice a little well. copy of this at some point because um, yeah. So I, jazz piano is my thing. That's oh, my. Oh nice. Other than being a sound engineer, if I had any profession, profession, it would have been. Oh wow. I'd say jazz piano, and um, yeah. Yeah, it's really I've good. Got, you, you've oh. not told me about this one. Love to sit there. You haven't watched my channel, then, if you if I haven't told you about I, it. I don't watch your channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's I hard to avoid your channel. <laughs> yeah, I found that book pretty yeah. inspiring for a lot of the stuff that I've been sort of gone yeah. on to do. I, I, I mean, good. just flicking through it, I love that it's full on proper jazz. We're not we're not holding back on the chords. Yeah, you know, that, we're that's sticking in the sharp and fifths and the yeah. That's it. Because that, all, all those things are what make jazz so beautiful, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. A seven and a flat and ninth. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally. Beautiful chords. I love a flat yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we can nerd yeah. out over a couple yeah. of beers yeah. sometimes. Oh, so, uh, definitely. Yeah. I love jazz piano. Yeah, so, yeah, so this, this is my new one. So um, it's kind of original finger style yeah. um, pieces. So I had ten of them, ten of them um, that I wrote out. It was hard to choose which 10 because I've been writing loads of these over the years, but I wanted to get it to 10. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of graded them. So the first ones are just kind of like 32 measures, one page, relatively simple. And they get more and more difficult as they go on. Yeah. And we end with the, the Wend, which has got all those nice chords in the Yeah. End, <laughs> which is so much. Uh, yeah. So, so they're all original pieces. And this is like an epic six pager. Wow. Well, one of the things I found was that so many ukulele pieces, they're only like eight, 16 or 32 measures. Yeah. And I wanted some pieces that people could really get their teeth stuck into um, and really take their time with. So that's one of the reasons I did it. And originally it was just going to be the song and then some, some kind of notes about it. But I've kind of turned it into a tuition book now. So if you take it from the first piece to the last piece, you learn different skills as you go along. Yeah. So you start with simple things like Pima style picking and um, thumb rolls and things like that. And then you go into kind of artificial harmonics and all sorts of fancy pants stuff later on. So and what sort of level, the, the, the early ones, how long would you have to be in playing to, to pick, I think get into them? Sort of six months? The third, yeah, I think you need a, a good few months under yeah. your belt. Just, just so you can kind of understand the rudimentaries of kind of chord melody. Although it does explain how chord melody works. Yeah. Um, I've got a whole piece in the start of the book about that. Um, but yeah, you want to you want to kind of know a few chords and know how to pick out a few notes. But I purposefully tabbed it out as well, so if people yeah. can't read standard notation, you've got the tabs to help as well. And is there does music come with it? Is there a um, a place where people can access it? Yeah. To listen to? So I'm recording it at the moment. I've done five of the tracks already, um, but every single track is going to have a YouTube demo of oh, it. Wow. So um, as I say, five done already. By the end of the month, they should all be up there. And will that do you have to pay separate for them? Or Those are free. Yeah. free. You, the, the demos you can literally just watch. It'll yeah. give you an idea of how it sounds when it's done. Yeah. Um, and then you can, and then you can play it. And I've done the the low G and high G arrangements separately as well. So I'm going to do demos of, of both okay, of them for them. And how much is it? Um, <laughs> I, <can't laughs> <play that>. uh, <laughs> I think it's about twenty pounds. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you can also get it for fifteen pounds. 
as a like a downloadable PDF. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So some of it we I will ship it worldwide, but some people in the states have done that, so they yeah. don't have to wait yeah. for it to be shipped out. And, and they can get it from matstead.com. Yeah, or, or matsteadukulele.com. Yeah, it's all on the website. Um, I've also done this as a course as well. So I've right. done the first six lessons. And I'm putting those on my website weekly at the moment. Yeah. So every piece I'm going to explain, it's almost like an hour-long video going into right. all the details oh, wow. and bit tuition. Oh, awesome. um, so it will work kind of if you've never done finger style before and that's what you want to get into. Yeah. Um, you can join in the course and do it that way as well. Yeah. It's great that there's a growing body of people out there, yourself included, doing, you know, more mm. modern stuff for the ukulele. I mean it's great, you know, the jazz book I really liked, but it's nice when people put new stuff out as well. So yeah. um, fantastic. Uh, so there's an album coming out, isn't there? Yeah, so um, yeah, so, so that's kind of it kind of interesting so originally I, I was going to do a CD of like all the songs on so you right. can listen to then I thought well I put that on YouTube anyway because everyone like uses the online stuff rather than CDs nowadays yeah but I want, still wanted to do the album so I kind of let the pieces take on a life of their own yeah so they start it is the 10 songs that are in here yeah but they start with one kind of arrangement and then they kind of go off in new directions okay. So um, I thought to keep it interesting, I've kind of lengthened them, you know, to make right. full, full length pieces and everything. And then I've got some of my favourite players, who yeah. are also my friends, which I'm really lucky to have some nice friends, like and, this man. And Paul. Uh, and Paul, yeah. And Paul. And Paul. And Paul. And Paul. And so, so yeah, so, uh, so I've got them, I thought, you know, they're really talented, but I thought, it's a ukulele album, I'm doing all the uke on it, but I've pretty much already done most of the uke, and I yeah. thought, well, there's no point in having like six different uke players on it. So I'm quite lucky mm. that a lot of my ukulele player friends play other instruments. So Paul's doing classical guitar, yeah. you've got yeah. classical and electric guitar on it. And the Ebo. And the Ebo, which I love, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah. I love the sound of Ebo. <laughs> and then I've got um, uh, Phil Dolman's doing slide guitar. Brilliant. Ooh, which is really, really lovely. Yeah. Percy Copley's doing banjo and... Um, Did you say mandolin? He's mandolin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it, which is really beautiful. Uh, and I've got Jeff Peterson doing some lovely slap key guitar on it, which is wow. really exciting. And then um, Mark Gallagher's done some beautiful piano. We heard this we piece did have a little Mark. Listen, and I didn't even lovely. know that Mark could play the piano. And he um, can play the piano. He can really play the piano. Really, really, really um, amazing. And that sounded pretty. So, you know, that was you know beautiful. And the piano really stood out as well as the ukulele. But So we had the, the benefit of hearing the track or two of this earlier. Oh, I don't think I mentioned him. James Ag, who right. he's a really amazing local bass player. Yeah. And he's played bass with Sarah Maisel and Craig Chi when they come over and people like that. He kind of like um he's he's an amazing session musician. So when we have the festival he just joins in with that. So wow. can just pick it up. He's done bass all through the, the um, album. Before we talk about the festival, um I also wanted to have a little chat about YouTube and all yeah, the yeah, bits yeah, yeah. that you do because um, obviously we know a tiny bit about YouTube, not much. <laughs> if you watch our videos, yeah. we don't know much. Oh, <laughs> um, you guys are great. But it's, it's something that you're, you're a regular on. I mean, it's a regular part of your life now, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, mass and massively so, yeah. How's, how's that developed? How, how, when, um, did, when did you start YouTube? It kind, of, it kind of all happened, I guess, by accident. Like a lot of good things, I guess, you know. Um, it, it started during lockdown, so turning a negative into a pos positive I kind of you know lost all my physical teaching overnight because mm -hmm. people couldn't come in so I thought rather than sitting around and mope I'll do something positive so I started recording the video so I um, started doing some really rudimentary live lessons I actually used Facebook live at first right, but yeah. went over to YouTube eventually and um, yeah I, I started recording kind of videos little tuition videos and stuff and um, I, I, for years and years, because I've been teaching a while, I've had quite a lot of students that have got to a certain level. So I teach a lot, lot of intermediate and advanced students, and I haven't really had the time to take on new pupils. So for years, I've been promising people a beginner's course. So during that first lockdown, I recorded a fully structured beginner's right. course, for, literally from right how to hold the ukulele in the first place. And it became really popular, which was really <laughs> nice. It was really, really amazing. I think partly because um, I was really honest about the fact that I struggled with ukulele when I first picked it up. I was a good guitar player, but there's things that I struggled with. 
And all the method books that I used to study, they go straight into like, we'll play our first three chords and stuff. Yeah. But they didn't show you like the angle, how to hold the yeah. ukulele. They didn't show you how to attack with the nails at different angles. So I kind of broke it down and went into loads of detail, almost like painful detail for some <laughs> yeah. people. But and that, that surprisingly, people yeah. like really love that. So, um, so I, then I did an intermediate course and an advanced course. And um, I've just been adding courses over yeah. here. So I've got five or six courses some of them are like hour-long videos you know 30 videos so quite quite um, and they're now all sort of a lot of those are available on your website yeah as part of a subscription and yeah so I kind of um I wanted to put them all in one place because yeah. I had like bits and pieces on different playlists on YouTube I had bits on Facebook and I was doing things here yeah. and there and kind of people would say oh where is everything? <laughs> I can remember half of it myself. So I put it all onto one website and it makes it easy for everyone. So you can access the first five of every course for free and then it's a subscription model from there where you can join um, and pay a, a small amount a month and you get access to all the courses. Yeah. Um, but then you can also access, I've got like a forum on there and you get my own personal teaching emails so that I can yeah. give you tips and things like that. And um, it was really scary because I kind of I, I riled against the subscription model for mm. for years and years because I wanted to do it donations only, but um, it just makes so much more sense to have everything in one place yeah. and be yeah. easily accessible. So that that's been the thing that I've been doing in the last few months. Really, it's been really satisfying. Um, you also you do a live, is it once a week? Yeah, so I do uh, mm. Can I Capilla every Monday. Yeah. So that's where I try and get people playing as much as possible about sheet music. Yeah. So teaching people how chords work, like the first and the fifth, and how they, you know, how the fifth leads to the fifth. Yeah. Kind of try and get people to do that, um, and do like little bits of soloing as well. So it's not just strumming yeah. and singing. So I do that every Monday at six o'clock, which is really really good fun. I love it's for me as much as anything. I just love yeah. it. And, yeah, people can chat along live, and it's yeah. like a, a like a little community. And it's, yeah, that's it's like the things found, that you guys it? do, yeah. the yeah. weekly thing. You get a community, you get a community going, going, and it's it's really nice. I we we were doing lives the first half of the year. We did lives every Friday. Yeah, and I found it so stressful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're probably yeah. going to go back to that next year. So we do half a year of lives and half a year of the Friday show. Yeah, but it was. Um, I found it so. Do you, and then afterwards, I, I'm kind of like, oh, that was so much fun. Yeah, like, totally. Yeah, it was like the best. Yeah, that, totally. Do you kind of because you've got to prepare for that, haven't you? You've got to know what you're what you're going yeah. through that week, and and do you have that same kind of sort of oh, build up all, to it, or are you all the time? Yeah, yeah, all the time. It's it's like anything, isn't it? It's like live shows. We're talking about kind of getting nervous and things before, and it's like you know, there's a, so much work that goes into those live sessions. You've got to plan the songs. You've got to write it all out. Sometimes you've got to provide sheets and things yeah. like that. Then same playing live, you've got to do all the rehearsals. And like before you start, like you're nervous, you feel, oh man, why am I doing yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like two hours later, you've done yeah. the show, or you've done, you know, the live thing, and you're just like on top of the world. Yeah. And I, I'm like that every every Monday at eight thirty, I'm just really buzzing. Like I, you'd think that'd be exhausting because I'd be teaching yeah. from nine, but I'm not. I go no, home and I'm like full of yeah. energy because yeah. I just love it. Oh, I'm glad it's not just us. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Festival. Festival, this was big news, wasn't it? This yeah. was huge. He literally yeah. rocked the internet. With us, <laughs> um, I, I mean, take it from the beginning. So, so, the, well, the Cheltenham Festival stopped when? Um, it was about five years ago. It might have been longer than that because right. it all gets lost in the midst of time, mm. doesn't it? I feel like life's in fast forward at the moment. Um, but yeah, and I loved it as a punter. Right. So I used to go every year, I used to get like a real buzz, like right from parking like a car in Montpellier and walking right. down, seeing everyone else walking along with you because I just loved it. And um, so I was really, really sad when it closed yeah. up. And I even remember thinking that last year, like, oh, I'd love to kind of keep this really? going. But I didn't really feel like I knew enough about right. promotion like okay. uh, I've done so much since then yeah I just didn't yeah. feel ready you know to do something like this and I didn't know the artist yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff so I, I guess it was probably like this little acorn in the back of my yeah. mind okay. something that I had um, and then I got talking to a few people at um, Gnaf this yeah. year and um, I really really love Gnaf I think they're almost like the gold standard yeah. festivals and yeah. I'm not just saying that to you know suck up or whatever I think they're brilliant and um, 
Mary and a few of the others hinted that there might not be enough next year. Okay. Or there, or there may be something, but it's in a different format. Yeah. And um, and so many people said, oh, they're kind of so sad that in yeah, the yeah. UK we've yeah. got lots of kind of small and mid-sized festivals, but it's nice to have the, the, that, that really big, big one yeah. as a focus. So, um, so uh, uh, it wasn't even my idea, genuinely. Right. A couple of people were like, you could do that. Yeah, yeah, well, oh. you are the ideal person. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, yeah. it's a lot of work. But um, yeah, so, so a few people said, oh, maybe you could do it. And I started talking to um, Mike at Carla, who was quite keen to have a festival as well, right. um, to, to, to kind of sponsor and things. And um, yeah, I was, and I, I was really inspired by that last enough. I thought it was genuine enough. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. It was amazing acts. You know, when you go home from a festival and you're kind of sad that it's all over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had that feeling. So I think that kind of made that a call and germinate a bit. And I thought, right. Oh, my mm, goodness. Mate. So you're, you're telling us that so this whole thing has come up since enough this year? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm kind of, you moved fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you see, when I get an idea, yeah. I get, my, my wife, honestly, she, she, she gets so fed up sometimes. But yeah. once I've got an idea, I'm like, right. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the do, same. Do this. Yeah. And Paul will vouch for this. Definitely. And... It, I'm not his wife. There. Well, <laughs> that, Just I don't know. I'll, I'll show you that photo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Minute, but, um, and yeah, I'm I'm the same. Once I've decided, and yeah. then it has to happen, and, yeah. and I'll make it happen. Mm. But it can be like I'll be the same. I'll be. Like, oh, I can put a festival on next yeah. week. Yeah. 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 Ring, ring around. Let's get people booked. Let's get the venues. Oh yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So awesome. I've, already, I've already got a few more grey hairs, you can see. Yeah. I might be fully white by, yeah. by next year. So it's um yeah, it's been like as soon as as soon as I decided to do it, I kind of it, it, it immediately became apparent how much work it was mm. gonna be. Yeah, I'll bet. Um thankfully, I mean the ukulele scene's just amazing, so many, yeah. so many lovely people. So within a week of even hinting at it, I had so many people saying, We'll volunteer, we'll help on oh, the doors, wow. yeah. you know, we'll help book acts if you're interested, you know, we'll sort out parking, all oh, this sort of stuff. Yeah. Even right down to organising venues and things so um, wow. so I've yeah. had, had quite a lot of help already. Have you got an actual team or are you just relying on? Building it at the moment yeah, yeah. I've, I've got people that have already said they're going to volunteer and I've got a few people that are helping but we will have really? an official yeah. team uh, near the time to ha help out because yeah. it is you know it's a big big oh, I can't imagine place. how much work yeah. it is yeah and some of the acts that you've got it's even more impressive that yeah thank you you've got them in that time i mean that's fantastic well it's kind of like i said like five years ago i didn't feel ready but since then um well paul, paul knows because you've played yourself I've, I've done kind of smaller concerts around yeah. here yeah. and then over the last few years i've run my ukulele retreat every mm. summer so i've kind of got a bit more experience of booking those apps but kind of more important than that i've kind of i've I've made friends and developed those relationships with those acts. So we had James and Anne perform, I think it might be like six years ago now. Can it be that ago? I don't know. It's a long time. No, it might, maybe it's three years ago. But yeah, we, we had them a few years ago. Um, and Sarah and Craig, we've done things with them yeah. and things. And Jeff, um, I was really lucky when I went out to Hawaii, I get, got to go to Jeff's house mm -hmm. and have a, have, a, have a lesson with him. And I find him really inspirational. So I kind of had all these links with these people who I consider like among uh, like amongst yeah. my friends. Yeah. And it's like great acts and stuff. So and um, then Paul. So, <laughs> and then Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so ticket sales went on sale pretty quickly then. In that yeah, case. yeah. Um, so good response. Really Happy amazing. Yeah. I can imagine. So we sold half of the tickets in about two weeks, just yeah. like. Phew. Wow. In fact, I actually had to rope in some of my students to help hand write all the envelopes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. like, so I'm not I should so all be them off, but we, we hand wrote them oh, all. That's so sweet. Um, and I put a little thank you on each ticket yeah. on my hand. So but this is why it's going to be a success. Because oh, <laughs> no, things, <laughs> things like that people matter. Like that, yeah. and, people love, and you're known for that. You're known for being sort of a caring, yeah. genuine guy. And I think that will come across because whoever leads a festival, that is what makes it, and I think that's why it will be an amazing success. Oh, thank yeah. you. Um, so half the tickets have got, so how many, can you say how many tickets are, there were going to be released in total? Yeah, so we've got um, just short of a thousand. Right, in okay. So it's going to be a big old, a big old um, festival. It's yeah. being held wow. in Charlton Town Hall, which is this yeah. really massive um, kind of uh, Victorian theatre, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, so we so we sold um, I think two thirds of the tickets now. Right. Wow. So if you want to go get in, yes. <laughs> yeah. where, where are we now? October. October. So, so yeah, still still you know good 
like nine months late, something like yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. So yeah. Grab your ticket. Yeah. 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 And how many venues are there going to be? So we've got the main venue itself is the town hall. That's going to be where most of the stuff yeah. is happening. So, and um, we've actually, I wanted to kind of respect how they used to hold the old festival. Right. Okay. Keep the spirit of it. And in fact, one of the important things was. The, one of the first things I did after I decided to, to do the festival was I got the old festival organisers, Ukulele Festival of Great Britain, because I wanted it to start from a good place and I wanted yeah. their permission. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, you know, they didn't want to run it anymore for whatever reasons, yeah. um, but they were happy for me to take it on. I'll bet they were. Um, bet so, they were. Uh, so yeah, we, we, got, we got permission. So we're doing some things that are similar to what we used to do, but some new things. Yeah. So we're actually extending the main concert to last two days now. So we're right. in the town hall, awesome. Saturday and Sunday, yeah. and we've got the vendors hall and everything in there. Um, the Friday night we're doing things differently as well. It used to be a meeting down the pub, right? Um, but it was always like really packed out. You couldn't get everyone in, and if it rained, it was an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So we've hired this really really beautiful church in Cheltenham, oh, wow. and we're holding the um, the we're going to have an opening concert on a Friday night. Oh, yeah, um, it's actually going to be a bit of a fundraising concert as well, and that's going to be in the church. So we're going to get some of the really big acts yeah. um, to headline, but also some. Uh, kind of rising oh, acts wow. as well, oh, nice. and it will allow them to play in a really beautiful atmosphere yeah, because yeah, the yeah. acoustics are like incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful building, so that's something new. And then on the Sunday, we're going to have the traditional aspects. We're going to have the the big bus, yeah, we call it, um, which again is going to help fundraising for for some some charities that we're going to yeah. fundraise for that, and a big mass jam in the park. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So it does sound nice. incredible. It sounds fun. It's going to be such fun. Yeah. 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 yeah, Where can people get tickets? The remaining third that they need to get quickly. So, um, it's an easy one to remember, a hard one to spell. Right. Um, UkuleleFestivalOfGreatBritain.com. Right. Know that just ukulele festival yeah. of Great Britain dot com. And how much are the tickets? Are the ticket level prices? Or yeah, we have just done um, one ticket price. Yeah. Um, right. If there are anyone that um, really struggles um, and is looking for some concessions, yeah, um, send me an email. But generally, we've just done one ticket price because it's basically buttons on seats. For yeah. Us, so we can only fit a certain amount of people in the town hall. So it's eighty pounds a ticket. Yeah. Um, and that includes all of the acts over the over the. I mean, that is, is good value. That is good it? value. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I for, for, for what you're going to get. That's you'd pay that's just to see me, wouldn't you? <laughs> there. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask for a reason because <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's July the twenty. Uh, so 26th to 26th, the 28th, yeah. Yeah. and we're actually okay. following it with our um, annual reclaiming retreat, yeah. we're making one giant <laughs> Just because you busy enough. Are you well, mental? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's either completely insane or a genius. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could be a little bit of both, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I put them together because I thought, if I'm going to do all this work, um, and as well as like the amazing experience, but I'm going to put it all in one go, get yeah, it all out, it all out one go, way. one go, and it means that people haven't got to travel down to yeah. rise. But the uh, the retreat sold out, that literally sold out. Yeah, that's all that, yeah. That, that's 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 we only have fantastic. like 50 places on that. Yeah. Um, and that's here, isn't it? Yeah, that's in the Forest of Dean, so yeah. uh, lovely old hunting lodge just yeah. in the forest. Um, and that's that's always a special part of my year. So yeah, yeah. And we got some like interstellar teachers. <laughs> next year. Yeah. I've always wanted James Hill to teach at the retreat. Yeah. Is know, he teaching at the retreat? Yeah, well, and well, Aaron well, and Nicole Kaim as well. Awesome. I mean, yeah. I'd say we can't wait. You can't wait. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd be looking forward to just going, let alone playing. So yeah, yeah it's 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 exciting for me on many levels. Um, wow, that was a. a that went quick, didn't it? What we talked about, <laughs> well, we, about there. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to put out a uh, Matt Stead special. Yes. <laughs> Why not? There's so much um, to talk about. Well, yeah, you know, it's great for us. Yeah. <laughs> but you do so much for the UK community, yeah, and oh, you're so well thought of. So, yeah. Um, and you are the ideal person to um, yeah. to do this. Um, it's, it's, it's what I was going to say. It's weird coming fairly new into the ukulele world. There's certain names that right from the beginning cropped up, and yours, yeah. yours was. You know, one of the major players in this country for you, yeah. really, and I think you know that should be recognised. And I, you know, I'm generally not just saying that. I had no idea. Say so thank you. That's no, really I, that's, that's really nice to hear. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I'm trying to think, but people like yourself, um, Alex of the New Clay Store, um, you know, the, the three kind of shops, Matt Warns, yeah, yeah Matt but Warns also you know, I mean, 
Phil Dolman crops up. Yeah. And there's, there was a certain hand, there's only a handful of people. But I always um, find whenever I talk about Matt, I remind people what a great player you are because I sometimes think the work you do, which is immense, is in danger of overshadowing your ability as a player, which I think is sad. So I always say to people, don't forget Matt's a damn good player as well. What? So uh, there you go. Uh, oh, Andy Craig. There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. You've written a novel. Yeah. Well, well, sorry, yes, he didn't know. Did two about actually? This, did two? So, no. I didn't. Sorry, I've completely not given him any yeah. warning that I was going to ask him about this, but I'm interested in this. So t- thanks about um, this. Yeah, I just, uh, I kind of, I, I'm a bit obsessed with both kind of art forms. Right. So massively into reading. Well, I was a librarian in a past yeah. life, so that, that was my thing. So, um, yeah, I've, I've written a few novels, but I'm kind of like, I'm a, I'm a trier rather than a succeeder. <laughs> oh, sure, so I've, I've not had anything published, frankly, apart from poems, I've had poems right. published. But, um, but you've done a new book, haven't you? Yeah, I did, I did one. So it's, it's a bit random. It's kind of influenced about where I live. So it's about um, six different people who all discover this run, da- run down bus. Right. Like a shell of a bus in the middle of a forest. Oh, wow. And for whatever reason, they've kind of been mystically drawn there. And they all kind of do it up and start this new life. So it's kind Sounds of. Sounds like Nick Hornby. Yeah, I guess really? it's got. Yeah, um, it's got. Yeah, I've probably read a few of his novels. So it probably has got. And it, can people get a hold of this? Or is it not out yet? I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever release it. Oh, well, oh, no, 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 I, I've, sent, I've sent it to a few agents, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm hitting that eternal brick wall. Well, yeah. No, we so, yeah, we'll maybe I'll self-publish it yeah. at some point. But... Do, you, do you ever sleep, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sleep. I mean, but I said, he's written a novel, and he goes, yeah, couple. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, generally, it's kind of an interesting thing. I, um, I wrote the entire novel on my iPhone. So I was trying to work out how I could do it whilst, you know, like the kids were watching yeah, TV yeah. and stuff. So um, just got, you know, the notes app on yeah, yeah. I just used that and I wrote out the entire yeah. novel. A very ancient wow. thumb. I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's how, I, that's how I did it. But yeah, I wow. just, I, it's that artistic thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, you yeah. guys are the same. Yeah. You've got your Anakin in the UK thing, you've got your teaching, you've got all these yeah. different We've things. We've got those seven novels we've <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We just sometimes yeah. we just can't help ourselves, yeah. can we? My, my like... life is stupid with <laughs> the amount of things. And my wife says you work ninety hours a week and you're doing this and that and that. And then I'll come home and go, oh, I think we might. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm yeah. doing a new podcast. Yeah. Or I'm doing yeah. this, or you know, oh, we've decided we're going to do this. Oh, well, we've got a band. We're going on tour next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What are you doing? Life's a living though, isn't it? So yeah. like sometimes I sometimes go home at like eight o'clock at night and just go, I'm so shattered. I'm just like, yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean, to, you clearly have that supportive family, and I mean, that, that makes all the difference, yeah. doesn't it? It's, I love them to bits. You know, yeah, yeah, this is very right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Get on with that. Yeah. And they're beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful children you have. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's why I do it, you yeah. know. So, yeah, you yeah. know, that's why I went to that subscription model because I've got paid for to take them on holiday. Yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Minecraft doesn't come cheap. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, well, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. We've we've had a, again. We've had a thoroughly we've had a brilliant we've had a, we've had two days. A lovely we? couple of days, and yeah. um, I've seen your collection was an absolute highlight. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anytime, um, thanks. Anytime you're down in the forest. Yeah, yes. Definitely, definitely. And uh, please do like, subscribe and ring the bell. Ding, ding. Yeah, you keep saying it the wrong way around, by the way. You said it wrong in the oh. video the other day. Useless. <laughs> Useless, he is. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much. We've had a thoroughly good time yeah. in, in here. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks thank for you. watching. <laughs>